Hey, Steve Stein here from Guitar Zoom. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're gonna to be looking at another solo for guitar solos you should know. This one is from The Cars, Just What I Needed. And uh, this is Elliot Easton. This is absolutely one of my favorite solos of all time. And uh, he's just an amazing player and he just always seems to play all the right notes all the time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this first here. We've got going to B. E major to B major, and then C sharp minor, and then we're going to go to A major. And I want to show you this. So if we look at those chords right there, we're playing a one, a five, a six, and a four. And so everything fits perfectly in the key of E major right there. The The issue here is, is if you listen to the beginning jam, um, what you're going to find here is you've got E major going to B major, and then C sharp minor, but then it goes to G sharp major. So what happens is it keeps alternating between going here and then the next time it goes there. And it's important to understand that when you start looking at the solo because one of the greatest things that Elliot does is all of his solos are so, so melodic and what he's doing is he's following those chords around. So when it begins here you're starting off with this bend on the seventh fret. Now I used to play this in a different position, but I went back and watched some live footage of Elliot to make sure I was doing this in the same positions that he's doing it in. Um, but a lot of this stuff, you know, if you wanted to, you could move it into a more pentatonic uh, kind of position that maybe makes more sense in your head or in your fingers or whatever, but I'm gonna play it this way. So we're going up here to the seventh fret of the second string. And you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm bending it up a whole step and then I keep picking it and stopping the string each time. So I'm not, I'm not doing that. What I'm doing is I'm picking it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop down. So we have, and you'll notice I'm bending it up and then I'm bending it back down. And then I'm actually gonna go back to it. And then that's what I want to show you is that little 5-6-5 five, hammer-on. Five now, if you decide you want to pick this a little differently or you want to do a hammer-on or something in a different place, don't worry about that. Play it however it's going to be most comfortable for you. So I have... So if we think about it, when it starts... So that's what's happening right there, okay? So again, I don't want to go through all the theory, but I just want you to think about this a little bit. And then we move down to B, and there he's bending up to the major third. So here we're bending up to the major third, and then here we're bending up to the major third, and then we're going to C sharp minor there, and then it's going to that G sharp, and that's where he's responding to that outside chord by going here to the major third of that chord, right? So, phrase one. Now it starts all over, and this time he's gonna be playing to the A major like you normally would. So his, his this next phrase here. So let's take a look at that. So, so I'm coming off here. Uh, here's my first part again. So right there, I'm actually playing two notes of the E major chord right there. And then we go into this thing here. So I'm playing the 6th fret and the 5th fret, and then sliding up a whole step into there. And I play that note twice, and then I slide back. He might be picking it, but that's how I do it. And then we go here. Now you'll notice I'm bending it up, and then I'm doing a reverse bend coming back down, and then going back down. That's all happening over that A right there. Okay, then we start all over again. Now here's your third phrase. 
Now, right there, that's where it's going to change because we have this awkward chord coming again, this outside chord, if you will. So this phrase, we're going... So notice how I'm bending it up, bringing it back down, and then I'm bending it back up at the end. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the second string, but at the end, I'm going to do a pull off backwards. And again, if you'd rather pick it, that's perfectly fine. And then here, I'm going to go... So I'm going to do my bend, whole step bend, but then I'm going to this five here to set myself up for this chord again. And then right there, what he does is he goes to the sixth fret and does a bend. So he's doing the same kind of thing he did at the beginning of that phrase over the, over the E and then the B, right? Uh, so that stuff. Okay, then we go into this kind of cool little uh, country style lick. Now, I always used to play that up here, but in watching him, he plays it here. So I'm bending the seventh fret. Again, we're over that E. So notice how I'm bending it up. I'm going to the ninth fret, the seventh fret, and then I'm bringing it back down and dropping down to the fifth fret there. Now you could let that ring out as best you can, whatever's comfortable for you. And then we move up to that thing. So we're going up to the ninth fret, 11th fret, 12 and 13, 14s, 15s, 16s. And what I'm doing there, you don't have to do this, but I'm doing what's called hybrid picking. So I'm picking with my pick and my middle finger. And there's a kind of a funky little rhythm to it. But you could certainly use your guitar pick if you'd rather do that as well. Not only learning the, the solo itself, but start thinking a little bit about how it's interacting with those chords, and that could be very beneficial for you. So you've got all of the technique of the bending, the sliding, the hammer-ons, the pull-offs, things like that to work on. Um, and then from there, what you could do is start trying to work a little bit more on how this is actually constructed, because that's, again, the beauty of some of the stuff that Elliot Easton does is just, like I said, he's one of my favorite guitar players simply because it always seems like he's playing the right thing. And I've always loved all of his solos. So let's break it down one more time just to make sure you've got this. So we start with our... And remember, as you're learning this, just take phrase by phrase. Don't worry about learning the whole solo right away. Just take one little part and get used to, you know, mimicking what I'm doing or mi mimicking what Elliot Easton is doing. Then we go into the next thing. And that's the end of that one. And then we've got. And I love how some of those phrases end with not just bending, but bending. And then it's this da da at the end. And then we do our little country thing here. that's your entire solo. So check that one out. Hopefully you enjoy this one. Uh, let me know if you need any help with anything. Uh, comment and let, let me know how things are going for you. So take care, stay positive, and I'll talk to you soon.